uh, this entire area Whoa. over here. It's called the Under Dune. Uh, we might get a chance to look at it later, but it's uh, tremendously vertical, and it, that, that differs uh, immensely from the from the other camps in the game that are maybe a little more uh, sprawling. Mm -hmm. So if I, I think I have done this one, but it's been a while. I mean, something that was really cool and kind of funny about Dust Laws 2 is it had this unbelievably, almost preposterously varied landscape that was like tropical islands and also a mountain, <laughs> like yeah. all in the same spot. It seems like something that, uh, that the team uh, values a lot is, is variety, uh, both in the, the landscape and like in the gameplay. Well, it has, you know, anything that design has to, to serve the mechanics, right? So. Uh, when you have a game like like Just Cause or Mad Max that has again like a, uh, such a varied toolkit, re this is really not the best I've ever done in combat. It's all right. There could be some input lag. There's a thousand excuses we can come up with. That's what it is. It's input lag. Totally input lag. All right. One more time with feeling. Alrighty. And again, the uh, the objective of, of these camps is just to take out all the enemies. Five skulls there on the right. Is that difficult? Yeah. Okay. So. Okay. I know what I'm, I know what I'm up against this time. I'm gonna be a little more focused. These, these colors of war paint on these guys that indicate uh, anything about them as combatants or are they just decorative? Yeah. Those are those are different. Um, first of all, the, the colored enemies in the game are all snake comes minions. Okay. So that identifies their faction, but also some of their combat behaviors <laughs> are dictated by their design. The, uh, the yellow guy there is more adept at dodging, as you can see. And uh, the other guy, he has some unblockable attacks that I'll have to dodge out of the way for. Those are sort of indicated with the red combo. Uh -huh. So there's this sort of combo meter in the hand-to-hand combat. And what, what, is that, what purpose does that serve, I guess? Like, are there, is there a benefit to, to doing it all in one big fluid chain? Yeah, you can see that I've got the, uh, the little meter with the, the chain surrounding it next to the combo. That's my fury meter. And uh, sustaining a longer chain is going to fill the fury meter faster. Gotcha. And that fury meter, uh, when, once I get fury active, that's what's going to allow me to uh, deal more damage, move faster, close distance easier. That's the sort of vignette uh, power mode we saw earlier, right? Yeah. Also, uh, any location that has scrap is going to indicate to you um, how much you found. So you're never left wondering if you found all of the scrap in a location. So for the completionist, that's a nice little feature. It says I've got three out of ten. There's there's ten drops of scrap that I can find in this location alone. And that's going to let me know when I've completely looted the location. I'm gonna even the animation bringing the water. 
is a different type of camp. This uh, this particular one is a, a transfer tank camp. So once I'm inside, I have a bunch of objectives to destroy. Unlike the last one, where the what I needed to destroy was people. Right. This time, I just have to destroy people. Uh, it's PlayStation 4, Xbox One, and PC. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for your time. Yeah, thank you.